Internet speed tests are riddled with junk. They include ads, tracking, Java, Flash, rip flash, and a whole bunch of other stuff you don't really need. So let's see if we can self-host our own speed test that claims to have no flash, no web sockets, no Java, and no bullshit. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about self-hosting our own internet speed test. And real quick, if you have a question about anything in this video, check out my live stream on Twitch. I spend a lot of time there answering a lot of your questions. So if you need some help, feel free to stop in and say hello. And another thing, thanks ahead of time for the likes and comments because it lets me know if I'm on track. So let's get into it. Internet speed tests traditionally have been slow, clunky, and inaccurate. Most of the time, they're chock full of ads and tracking. And traditionally, a lot of them have used plugins that are now deprecated to measure your internet speed. I mean, who needs those plugins now when most of the time, our browsers can handle it on its own? And then I started to think about who needs these websites anyway? And that's when I started to search for a self-hosted option. I stumbled upon an open source project called LibreSpeed. So LibreSpeed is an open source, self-hosted speed test option that you can host inside of your own network. It's based on JavaScript, XHR, and web workers. So it doesn't require any additional plugins from the browser. And the nice part about it being a self-hosted option is that you can use it to test any device in your network locally. But you also have the option to host it publicly too, if you like. And it also has a lot of the features that the public speed tests have. Things like upload speed, download speed, ping, and jitter, as well as sharing your results with others if you like. Now, all of that is optional and configurable, and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. And the way we're gonna set this up today is using Docker and then move on to Kubernetes. I'll walk through how to set this up with Docker, and then I'll show you how to set it up in Rancher. And if you're not familiar with Rancher, Rancher is just an easy way to get Kubernetes which then gives you containerization. And if you need help setting that up, I've got a complete tutorial that'll walk you through setting up Docker, Rancher, and Kubernetes in just a couple of minutes. But if you don't wanna do all that, we'll cover Docker too. And so, let's get into it. So the source for our Docker image is going to be linuxserver.io. They build and maintain Docker images for a lot of my favorite services. And they've got great documentation too. And the other nice thing about Linux Server is they have a common API for all of their Docker images. And you can see that here while we're configuring our Docker container. So if you're using plain old Docker, we'll cover that here. But if you're using Rancher, we'll translate this to a Rancher deployment or a Kubernetes deployment here in a second. But if you're using Docker, you'll run a Docker run as a daemon. Then we're gonna name this container LibreSpeed. Then we're gonna set some environment variables of PUID and PGID. And we set these for permissions and they're really easy to get. All you have to do is remote into your server that's running Docker and type ID. And then you'll wanna use the ID and the group that you use to run Docker. So in my case, on my test machine, it's 1000. Next is TZ for time zone. We'll skip over the next environment variable and talk about databases first. With LibreSpeed, you can store your results. And you can store those results in different types of databases. You can choose SQLite, Postgres, or MySQL. And if you choose MySQL or Postgres, you'll need to set a username and a password environment variable too. So that's where this password one comes in. But in our case, we're gonna use SQLite, which is the embedded database. And this parameter is optional. And it will use this if you don't specify anything. But you'll see that here in a second. The next environment variable is custom results. And that's whether or not you want to use a custom results page. I think we'll opt out of that one for now. And then P is for publish or our ports. In this example, they expose port 80 from the container to the outside of port 80 as well. And we'll change that here in a little bit. And V is for mounting our volume. So in this example, we'll have a path on our host that's mounted to a path in the container. So the path on the host is on the left side and the path within the container is on the right side. And that's because this is a staple application and it needs to write some data. The next flag is restart unless stopped and this helps restart the container if something goes wrong. And the last piece is our registry. And it looks like they're using GitHub's new registry instead of Docker's registry. And if you wanted to spin this up with plain old Docker, you would just paste that command. And within seconds, you would have LibreSpeed running on this machine. But let's move on to Rancher. So in your Rancher server, you'll wanna to go to global, cluster, and your default cluster, and then we'll go into the cluster that we created. Once you're here on workloads, we'll want to deploy a new workload. 
So we'll click Deploy. And now we're going to translate those Docker commands we talked about earlier to a Rancher or Kubernetes deployment. So here we'll name our Kubernetes deployment and we'll name it LibreSpeed. Next, we want to set our image and that's right down here. So our Docker image is going to be this value here. And you can keep the namespace to default or whatever namespace you use for your workloads. Next, let's set our environment variables. So PUID and PGID we determined were 1000. And if you need that, skip back about a minute or two. Next, we'll set TZ or time zone and mine is America slash Chicago. And then I'm going to opt out of the rest of the environment variables because this works fine without it. I'm not going to use an external database and I don't really see the difference between the custom results and the default results. So we can skip on to volumes. Next, we'll expand volumes and then we'll see this fly out of different volume types. Now, if you're using a single node and a single agent, you've done the Docker install and you don't have any more agents, you can pick by mount a directory from a node. And that will work fine if you only have one node. But if you have more than one node, you want to set up a persistent volume claim. And I won't go into detail about how to set that up, but if you're interested, you could set up something like Longhorn or NFS for your storage class. And I've got a video on Longhorn if you're interested in that. But for the sake of this machine, this is a single node, so I'm going to do by mount a directory from a node. And here we can name our volume. This can be anything really. So I'm just naming mine Libre Speed. Next, we'll set the mount point within the container. And that's right here, that slash config. And next, we'll set the path on the node. So we'll need to remote into that machine and create a folder for the path. So I remoted into my server and I created a directory called Libre Speed. And then in there, I created a folder called config and then I cd'd into there. So this is the path we're gonna write to from our Libre Speed container. So we'll copy and paste this and then we'll paste it here. So the next thing we'll need to take care of is our port mapping. That's right here. So in Kubernetes, we have a lot of options for port mapping. Now, if we were running this in a cluster, typically we would create an ingress to allow that traffic inside of these pods or in this case, this one pod. And if you know what I'm talking about, you should probably create an ingress for this. But if you're running this with a single node, we can do this with host port. And what this will do is map a port from the container to the host. And we do it like this. So let's add a port. We'll name the port Libre Speed. Then we'll publish the container's port. So the container exposes port 80. So we'll put 80 here to the host port, which is this server to a port of your choosing. And I'm going with 30,001 here. That's because I know that these ports aren't gonna be used by other services. But you'll wanna pick one that's not being used by either your containers that are running already and other services in general. But the 30,000 range is usually a pretty safe bet. And before we spin that up, we'll change one more thing. We'll go into scaling and upgrade policy. So since we chose host port, we're gonna need to set this to kill all pods, then start new. That's because we can't spin up another pod on that same port while the other pod is still active. And so we'll choose kill all pods, then start new. Here. Then we can click launch and we can see it's spun up already. So let's go out to our speed test. And if we go out to our speed test, here it is. So Libre speed speed test. So we have the option to start it. We can see we have ping and jitter, download, upload, and then a link to the source code. And if we click start, we can see it's already running a speed test. Now you might be thinking to yourself, whoa, I don't have gigabit internet. And I hate to break it to you, you didn't get a speed upgrade. That's because it's a test between the server and yourself. And in this case, the server is in Kubernetes or Docker, and the client is me on my machine. So really this was testing our gigabit ethernet, which is totally fine and actually I think it's a feature. I got roughly gigabit. You can see my IP address, which is a private IPv4 IP address. You can see my ping was around one millisecond. Jitter was eight hundredths of a millisecond. And then we actually have a link to our results. So we click here, it copies it to our clipboard. And if we go to that URL, we can see our results. So that's pretty awesome. So back to the speed test, we can actually configure this if we like. Personally, I like this default theme, but we can customize it. They include some templates that we can swap out and I'll show you how to do it. So if we go back to a rancher or Docker server and we go inside a config and we do an LS now, we should see that we have some files. And in here, you can see a www folder. So let's CD into there and then do an LS. And we can see here we have a bunch of files along with our index.html. So our index.html is being loaded now, but we could swap them out for these other examples. So let's try that real quick. So let me show you how this works first. 
The first thing I'm gonna do is actually move or copy this index.html to index.html.back. So what this did was actually rename my index.html to index.html.back. So that means I don't have an index.html anymore. And you're right. And if I refresh this, and we see an error here, albeit it's a 403 because it can't read the index.html, but either way, we see an error. And so if we wanna try one of these other examples, all we need to do now is copy that example to our index.html. So let's check out this example multiple servers full.html. So what I do is do a copy example multiple servers full.html to index.html. If we run that and run an ls, we should now see we have an index.html. And so if we refresh this, now we see that full example. And so this has an example that's actually pointing at an external server outside of your network. And you can see this must be a LibreSpeed demo server pointed at some server in Helsinki. So if we click start, now we're testing our internet from this client to that server. And you can see after running this test, I'm getting around 140 megabits down and 51 megabits up. And so that's really cool. Let's check out another example. So let's do that same thing, but with the pretty version, refresh this page. And now we have the pretty version. This doesn't look too pretty to me. <laughs> Maybe they mean minimal, I don't know. But let's run our speed test again and we can see our results. And what if we just wanted a progress bar? So let's try the progress bar and refresh. Now we have a progress bar and here's our results. So this is really cool. We can run a speed test internally and we can point it at external servers if we want. The cool thing about running this internally is that because it's hosted internally, we can access this from any device with a web browser. So if you wanna test your wireless network speed, say with your phone, you can do that very easily by going to this address. And that cuts out the trip to the internet that you used to make by running a speed test on your phone. So all we'll need to do is go to that address on your phone and we can see here we have our speed test. We can click start. And so this is testing from my phone to my access point to this Docker container. And you can see I'm getting around 200 megabits per second and the download is around 115 megabits per second. And you can see I have a ping of three milliseconds and a jitter of around seven milliseconds, which that's pretty awesome. I've never done a speed test on my phone directly to my access point. But this is just one example of one touch point within your home. Just think, you can do this with tablets, Xbox, your PlayStation, not your Apple TV because they don't have a browser, but other smart TVs that have browsers, or really any device in your home that has a browser. And the cool thing is, it's not making that trip over the internet to someone else's server. But if you do want to make that trip over the internet to your own server, that's where this gets really cool too. Because you could actually host this externally if you like. You could have your very own publicly hosted speed test. You could host this in the cloud with AWS, Google, Azure, DigitalOcean, anyone. Or you could self-host it and expose it to the cloud so that you can get to it on the go. You have a ton of options with this and that's part of the benefit of running something open source and self-hosting it, is that you can customize and tailor this to your needs. And I have some videos on exposing internal services publicly, but that's out of scope for this. And so, what do you think of LibreSpeed? What do you think about hosting your own speed test? How much utility do you think there is hosting your own speed test internally and testing it with internal devices? Let me know in the comments below. And if you ran into any problems or have any questions about this video or any of my videos, hop in my Twitch stream and let's figure it out. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. And turn it into um, a create a service in a YAML file and try deploying it that way through Kube Control. Because then you'll start to realize, oh, like this is really powerful. Like I can have, you know, and you'll start to realize that a lot of the YAML for your services, it's all copy pasta. Anyways, it's copy pasta. Replace a name, replace an ingress maybe, maybe a namespace, doubt it. Uh, and maybe a couple variables. The rest is copy pasta. And then so then if it's copy pasta, you can go kube control apply whole entire folder. And if you do kube control, you know, dash F, or a kube control apply dash F to a folder. Brrr, I mean, you just totally spun out however many services are, are in that folder and you can spin up your whole entire infrastructure like that. And you're like, oh yeah, that didn't work. I had a typo in one file. 
kube control delete dash f point to the folder and and just totally burn down the whole entire environment